And now, Warren Eckstein. Uh-huh. Hey, good morning, everyone, and welcome once again to the Pet Show. Is your rescue dachshund acting a little depressed? Does your senior calico seem a bit cranky? Are your golden doodles acting way too goofy? Well, if you love animals, care about wildlife and the environment, you have come to the right place because if you want to understand your dog and cat's behavior, how can I put this? Almost as well as they understand yours and you want to improve their lifestyle, you know what to do. Stay tuned because right now you're listening to America's first and only real pet psychology, pet training, pet behavior, and of course, pet lifestyle show. So hop up on my couch, bring those furry little buddies with you folks because it is that time once again to let the animal analyzing begin. Hey, good morning, everyone. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show, the place where we absolutely, positively, never a doubt about it, love, adore, and as I stress every single week, respect pets and animals as much as you do. By the way, if you want to join me on the ever-growing Pet Show family, if you have a question or a comment about your dog or cat's behavior, uh, maybe uh, your cat's keeping you up at night, uh, maybe your cat's not eating the way it used to. Maybe you got a new cat and the cat that lived there previously is not thrilled about it. Maybe you have this wonderful adopted dog, but for some reason you're just having difficulty housebreaking him or he's barking too much or he's not getting along with the neighbor's dog. You get the idea. That's what we do here on the Pet Show, and that's what we've been doing here on the Pet Show for almost 44 years, helping people resolve any issues that you may be having with your dogs or cats and a lot more likely any issues that your dog or cats may be having with you as human beings. As always, plenty of time to answer all of your pet and animal questions and lots of great stuff to give away on this show as well. Uh, Everyone that calls into the show and gets to talk to me live on the air will get a fabulous gift. Don't get excited. You know it's not for you. It's for your dog or cat. And again, if you think I'm giving away biscuits and milk bones here, think again. Many of the items I give away are 25, 35, 45, even 50 bucks. So if you have a question or comment about your dog or cat or just want to share a great story. I love hearing stories about dogs and cats that have been rescued, and especially on this this holiday weekend. If if you How many dogs and cats over the years I've worked with that were named Easter because they were rescued at this time of year? So I'd love to hear from you people. Plenty of time for your calls. As I said, lots of pretty amazing stuff to give away as well. So if you have a question or a comment, want to share a story, a great time to give me a call. Uh, the phone number here at the Pet Show, 8... Um, eight it's number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through, 866-870-KRLA. you think that'd be ingrained in my mind after all these years. But as I said, plenty of time for your calls, lots of great stuff to give away. I got hugs and kisses to give away. I have uh, uh, Lucy Pet Food to give away. So a lot of great, Kitty Licky's back in stock to give away. So everyone that calls in and talks to me live today, Today on this Easter weekend, will get a great gift uh, for their dog or their uh, or their cat. So let me tell you what I have planned for today's show. All right, you know I may not get to all my topics, but I'm really going to try. So here we go. So why do dogs bark? Now that may sound like a stupid question to some people out there. What do you want to do? Speak three languages? Of course, dogs bark, but why? I told you the story of my dog. You know, I'm living in Arizona, and my next door neighbor heard my uh, my guy Molly bark woof woof once, and he told him to shut up. I haven't seen him since after I had a conversation with him. But anyway, why do dogs bark? A lot of people just assume uh, that they're barking for no reason, just because we aren't aware of what your dog is barking at. Doesn't mean that they're barking for absolutely nothing. I'll explain dog barking in depth coming up a little bit later on today's show. And if your dog lives with you and you live with your dog, that's a topic you weren't going to talk about. So does anyone have a question about their dog barking either excessively or maybe you have a dog that doesn't bark? Some dogs have to actually get on all fours and and teach them to bark. So we're going to talk about barking coming up a little bit later on today's show. Again, that phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5750. Also, coming up on today's show, you know, I love cats. I've had as many as 27 or 30 cats at one time. I absolutely adore them. I love the fact how smart they are. And sometimes you look at them and they say they're in charge because you know they are. 
So coming up today, is your cat going a little bit crazy all of a sudden? It seems that I've had an increase in cat behavior contacts this week. Why is that? You're not sure what's happening? Why they're changing your cat's behavior? Let me give you two words. Spring fever. That's right. Spring fever. Just maybe why your cat's behavior is changing. So we're going to talk about spring fever coming up with your pets as well. Again, that number 866-870-KRLA. Also coming up. Lick, 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 lick. I tried to get to it last week. I ran out of time. I never got to it. But so many people call me up with excessive lickers. Their dog is licking constantly. It's driving them crazy. They can't go to sleep. They can't watch TV because lick, 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 lick. Why is your dog constantly licking? Is it nothing? Or could it be something more serious? We'll talk about that on the show as well. Also coming out unpredictability, how it affects your pets. You know, having worked with animals for as many years as I have and having trained dogs on pretty much every continent for every purpose possible, I've come to the conclusion that one of the most important things that we can do as good pet guardians is be predictable. Animals are predictable. We're not predictable. Okay, so I think it's really important. I'm going to talk about this a little bit later, how so many dogs and and cats for that matter, too, that may have certain quirks or, or certain behavior issues is basically due to the fact that their guardians are really not predictable. So they don't know what to make. And, you know, animals live in a, a pretty predictable world. So we're going to talk about that as always. Plenty of time for your questions. Lots of great stuff to give away. So if your pet is jumping, chewing, scratching, maybe that new rescue dog is a cat is confused about the litter box or, or that dog isn't housebroken, doesn't get along with other dogs, believes he has to hump everything in sight, great time to give me a call. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Now, we've talked about this before, and I was doing an interview this week, and the person I was talking to was asking me about the pros and cons of sleeping with your pets. Uh, He got the right guy. Now, I understand that there are people out there that have difficulty going to sleep with their dog or cat in bed. I don't happen to be one of them. I can't go to sleep unless my pets are in bed with me. Uh, So that's the question I'm going to toss out at you guys today. I know we've talked about it before, but I think it's time to hear it again. Do you believe that you sleep better with your pets in bed with you? Or would you sleep better if your pets were not in the bed with you? I'd love to hear from you. Give me a call. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. So here I am sitting in Arizona where, uh, 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 you know, I live in California, Santa Monica, pretty much for the last 30 some odd years. And there's a big storm coming in to California. Maybe it already came into California because I know it's going to hit me, uh, I believe, tomorrow. And again, I talked about rain, 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 rain. A lot of people have no comprehension how dangerous rain can be for their pets for many reasons. Number one, you take your dog for a walk after the rain. He licks up the water in the street. God knows what's flowing down the streets of Southern California. You want to be careful about that. Number two, it's very easy for a dog to get lost in the rain because the smells that he's used to, the things that smell normal to him after the rain don't smell the same way. Now, the, I, I talked about this a couple of weeks ago when I was talking about some of the training I did with search and rescue dogs, that after rain, uh, the moisture actually makes the smells stronger as well. So things that normally the dog would bypass, they may get involved with smelling and, and track that along. So in the rain, it's critical to be really conscientious about where your pets are at all the time. Better yet, keep them inside, order a pizza for you, something special for them, sit down and watch some uh, reruns of Lassie Come Home because the rain is not a good time for for your pets to be outside. Plus the fact, how many people out there have dogs, <laughs> you take them out to poop and pee in the rain, and they look up at you and say, come on, <laughs> come on, really? You have a roof in your bathroom, don't you? You want me to pee and poop in the rain? You have a roof. I want a roof. <laughs> so how many people out there have dogs that, that you take them out for a walk in the rain, they look at the door you took them out of, and they want to come right back in? I'd love to hear from you. Give me a call. We'll have some fun along the way. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. So here are some of the things I've learned so far about being back in Arizona. It's hot. It's hot. And it's going to get hotter and hotter and hotter and hotter. So I get an email today from my town. 
and it says starting April first. You know, in 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 Santa Monica where I live, um, the gardeners can start cutting the grass. I think it's seven thirty or eight o'clock in the morning, and that's when they start. And that's fine with me because I'm up early anyway. It doesn't bother me. But because it gets so hot so early in in Phoenix area. Here's the deal. I just got the memo today. That's starting as of April, April 1st. That the gardeners, and I understand that it's hot out there, but can start cutting the grass and, and doing what they do uh, starting at, uh, at 6 o'clock in the morning. I don't need no stinking alarm clock. All I got to do is wait for the gardener to kick up the lawnmower. I, I, my heart breaks for these guys out there in the heat, and I'm glad they're going to start early. It doesn't bother me because I'm an early riser, but my lovely wife, Denise, may not be so thrilled about it. Again, that phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. The other thing I've noticed here uh, since I've been here and the differences between the, the dogs in, in uh, Los Angeles and the dogs here where I am, uh, it's interesting because in the community I'm in, it seems that everyone has two dogs, uh, a brace of, of corgis, a brace of Havanese. I've seen uh, breeds of dogs here that that I haven't seen for many, many years. Uh, 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 um, Portuguese water dogs, an incredible breed of dog, and and so many other breeds of dogs as well. And and I wonder what the difference is. And the one thing I love about my Angelino buddies is I noticed a lot more rescue dogs. Although there's a lot of rescue dogs here, but I noticed a lot more people walking what I call blended breeds in Southern California. Again, that number, 866-870-KRLA. We got plenty of lines open. We're just starting the show. Plenty of time to answer all of your pet and animal questions. I do want to find out, for example, uh, if you find it easier to go to sleep at night if your pets are in bed with you, or if you find it easier to go to sleep at night when the pets are not in bed with you. Uh, when I was in the uh, the service, um, luckily for me, I always had a dog. I always had a dog to lay down next to. It was a great, a great experience. I, I don't think. I don't think. I don't think other than going through basic training and other stuff that I had to do, I don't think I've ever spent any time sleeping without an animal next to me. I think I told you guys the story before. I'll get to some questions. I think I told you the story before. When I was growing up, one of the advantages of being me is in my Long Island house. Yeah, I'm from Long Island. In my Long Island house, no one, no one, my mother, my grandparents lived with us, another grandfather lived with us, my sister, her two kids, no one would ever go into Warren's room. They'd go into every other room, but no one would ever go into my room. Why? Because I had lizards, I had snakes, I had rats, I had this. So that's my, that's my, if you want privacy, <laughs> if you want privacy in your room, maybe a couple of rats, a snake, I don't know, a few other animals is the way to go. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. Also, I'd love to hear from some barking dog people. I know a lot of people call me and they say, Warren, uh, my, constant, my dog is constantly barking. What is excessive barking? What, what, is, what does that mean? I mean, I told you about my neighbor. My dog went woof, woof, and he thought that was excessive barking. In the meantime, the dogs on the other side are three times, four times, ten times as large as Molly. Never said a word to them. I got, I came to the conclusion that when you move to a new neighborhood, it's kind of like everyone wants to to find some fault. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, they're not going to find any fault with me because, as you know, I'm perfect. Uh, but they found fault with Molly, my little dog. Woof, woof. Bark twice. The culprit. You saw the video I posted. 866-870-KRLA. If you have a question or want to find out why your dog is doing certain things, maybe they're not housebroken, jumping, barking, digging. Maybe they're acting aggressively. I know it's Easter weekend. A lot of people celebrating Easter with big dinners at their homes. And, again, the conscientious will understand that you have to be really careful. People coming in the house, people going out of the house, uh, different types of food in the house uh, and you want to make sure a lot of chocolate a lot of chocolate around Easter you want to make sure theobromide's there you want to be careful about that so common sense goes a long long way that on top of the rain could make this a very fun weekend but a weekend that you should be conscientious about your pet safety as well I'm going to take a break when I come back Renee I'm going to get to you the phone number here 866-870-KRLA 866-870-5752 as I said plenty of time for your calls I have hugs and kisses to give away I have copies of my best-selling books, either How to Get Your Dog or How to Get Your Cat to Do What You Want. I also have Lucy Pet Food, Kitty Lickies, lots of other great stuff to give away as well. Also, I have those uh, those air horns to give away that we have. And, and I say this every week, but listen to me. If you're not carrying one of those air horns with you, you're crazy. I mean, literally. 
I live in Arizona now, but when I lived in, in Santa Monica, I always had air horns, coyotes, uh, stray dogs in the street, uh, crazy people walking down the street. Uh, now here, where I am right now, I just heard a story of someone who has a very, very tiny uh, uh, a Chihuahua blended breed and a large owl scooped down and picked up the dog. I wasn't able to carry it far, so the dog was okay. A few talon marks in it. Uh, so you got to be so conscientious about our pets. It's not like it was years ago where you open the door and Fido and Fluffy go outside for a walk. No, 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 no. Way too dangerous. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number, 866-870-5752. Let me take a, a quick break. We'll get back to all your phone calls. And also, by the way, I'm going to tell you about a very, very special sale going on on my website on all of Nature Vet's products. We're having a BOGO sale. We've never done this before. So if you uh, want some Nature Vet products, uh, you go to the website, thepetshow.com. I'll give you more info on that a little bit later. But right now... Some of the, by the way, all those books on the shelf are mine. I've actually written 13 books, uh, and uh, some of them are in Italian, some of them are in Japanese, some in German, but there are 13 books up there, I promise. Hey, great time to give me a call. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. 866-870-KRLA, uh, 866-870-5752. The question of the day is, do you sleep better with your pets in bed with you? And I'd also like to hear from some people about how their dogs react in the rain. Uh, does your dog refuse to go out in the rain? Are there things you can do to encourage him to go out in the rain? I'd love to hear from you guys as well. Or any other problems you may be having, 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Uh, let me take a call right now from Renee in Chino Hills. Hi, Renee. Welcome to the Pet Show. Hello. Hi, Renee. How are you today? I'm doing fine. How can I help you, Renee? I'm calling because we have a three and a half year old English Springer Spaniel, and I kid you not, every time he has his meal, he gets very naughty, nasty. <laughs> a couple of questions. Springer Spaniel, one of my favorite breeds, they were very popular in the 70s and the 80s. Black and white or liver and white? Black and white. Okay, they're beautiful dogs, but let me tell you, the Springer Spaniel is a very, very smart dog, and when they think they can take advantage, they will. So is the dog mellow and kind most of the time? Yes. Tell me about the He's food. Very lovable. He loves being with you, being with What's his name? What's his name? Cody. Cody, Cody. Ballinger. Cody. Cody or Odie? Cody, C-O-D-Y. Oh, Cody. Co okay, Cody. Okay. So let me ask you a couple of questions about Cody. Cody's how old now? He's three and a half. He'll be four in September. Okay. And you've had Cody since he was a puppy? We've had him since he was a puppy, and we've been how home with him ever since. And how many puppies were in the litter? There was a pretty large litter, maybe like eight. Okay. That's number one. Number two is when did this behavior start? Oh, he started, it's been a while, but then he eats his food. We give him that still science diet food. Yeah. And it just seems like every time he's finished eating his little food, he wants to come over and grab your leg and gets very aggressive. That's because he wants Lucy in his bowl instead of science diet. <laughs> Probably. <laughs> Listen to me, though. Let me go over yeah. a couple of things. Let me go over a couple of things with you. Sometimes when a dog is born into an excessively large litter, they have to really negotiate for their mom's teats. And therefore, by the time they get there, very often, depending on what, what position your dog might have had in, 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 with the group of puppies, um, th they're either pushed away or the only way they can get there is to be assertive or more aggressive. Now, the fact that dogs learn through the associative memory, that early learning at that point that they have to be aggressive, not just before they eat, but after they eat to protect themselves as well. So a couple of things I want to ask you, especially coming from a large yeah. litter. Number one is how many times a day do you feed Cody? He's about two times a day. Okay. Any regular schedule or you just feed him when you want to? No, he's on a regular schedule. Um, usually in the mornings around 7.38 we feed him his kernels and then sometimes I'll cook chicken for him. And, okay. And chicken broth. 
and add it to his milk or an egg and give him food and then he has it in the evening when we normally when we eat i try to serve the dog okay so let me ask you another question when you feed him he's fine when he goes to eat there's no aggression he eats his food he's fine he's dandy and then all of a sudden when he's done with the food that's when he becomes aggressive yes he just wants to come over and be nasty well, let me tell you what. Well, let me tell you what that's all about, because that was part of survival as a puppy, even at eight or six or seven or nine weeks old. In other words, after he ate, he might not have received enough food, and therefore there was nothing left in his bowl. And to get back to the mom, he had to be assertive with the other dog. So to him now, you become the, become the other puppy. So how do we resolve this issue? Well, there's a couple of ways we can do it. But number one, telling him no or bad dog or foolie is totally out of the question. And if any trainer or behavior says this is when you need to get tough for the dog tell him to leave that's not what you need to do here's what i'm going to recommend that you do number one starting tomorrow whenever you feed cody instead of feeding cody out of one dish i want you to start feeding cody not more food but i want you to start feeding cody out of two and in some cases i've gone to three but right now let's start out with two dishes and i would spread the dishes apart maybe all five or six feet i want cody to start understanding that when he finishes his food that doesn't necessarily mean the end if he's still hungry because you know what there's food over there as well very often that's enough to resolve this problem or a lot of trainers would get tough enough the dogs being aggressive jerk them around tell them no put them on no no, no, no. He is in survival mode at that time, going back to early days. You know, just like why does a human being at 16 or 18 still suck their thumb? Because things early on in their life encourage them to do so. So that's what we're dealing with. We're not dealing with an aggressive dog. I know you've heard the term Springer Rage, correct? No. no. <laughs> oh, well, good. I'm glad you never heard that because it was a problem a long time ago when everyone was breeding them badly. But now it's fine. They're great dogs. Exercise. Always good positive training. One more question to you. When he shows that aggressive yes. behavior after he eats, what do you do? I just get his and push him down, tell Cody, have him sit down. I go, Cody, no, that's not the way you behave. You sit down, or I would tell him that's not how you say thank you. you but know, you're still, but see, at that does. point, at, at still, I see, at that point, what's happening, he's still getting attention for being aggressive with you, right? Yes. Okay, so try the two bowls. When he comes over to you after he eats, don't react to him at all. Just walk away. He's doing it for a response, the same response he might have got from another litter mate when he was a puppy. So I just want you to walk away. Try the two dishes. I think that'll make a difference. If not, call me back. There's a lot of other things we can do. But at this point, I think that's the way to start. Right. Okay, I'll do that. And one other thing. Why did sure. you have anxiety separation? When we leave, he literally will wait by the front door, not eat, not drink his water, and just wait there till we come home. Well, you know, separation anxiety is very, very common with dogs. However, it sounds to me like when you are home, you're with him 24-7. Am I correct? Yes. Okay, so what you need to do is start giving him some independence. Even when you're home, go into another room, go out the backyard, go for a ride around the corner, come right back. Don't make a big deal out of leaving. Don't make a big deal out of coming home. All of those things can make all the difference in the world. Two things I want you to do. I'm gonna, I want you to go onto my website or go to my YouTube channel, and I want you to read the information specifically about separation anxiety. I was going to send you a book, but I'd rather switch you over to a different food at this point. I think that might make a difference as well. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put you on hold and uh, what i'm going to do is i'm going to have uh, uh my good friends over at lucy pet food send you some lucy pet formulas for life pet food here's how you do it though you don't change all of a sudden increase it a little bit at a time start adding a lucy pet food removing the other food and little by little you can make the switching and keep me posted because i'm sure in no time at all cody behavior will change but sometimes and this is where trainers and behaviors try to work together sometimes we need to understand that behavior we're seeing three four five six eight nine years later can generally go back all all the way, all the way to when the dog was a puppy or the kitten, uh, the cat was a kitten. Just like with human beings, if you go through therapy, by the way, you always find out that a lot of your issues go back to when you were a baby. Phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA. Great time to give me a call. I got some open lines, which is pretty rare. I got hugs and kisses to give away, kitty lickies to give away, uh, Lucy Pet Food, you just heard me give away, uh, copies of my books. Uh, I got plenty, plenty of those air horns, so lots of great stuff to give away, plenty of time for your calls, 
866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Well, we were just talking about dogs. How about we switch over to cats? Because if you live with a cat, we are back on the pet show on this Easter weekend. I'm Warren Eckstein. Great time to give me a call. Uh, The phone number here at the Pet Show, 866-870-KRLA. I know it's tough to get through to the show sometimes, but I do have some open lines. I guess Easter weekend, everyone's out there busy and running around getting their jelly beans. By the way, that is my addiction. I've come to that conclusion. I am addicted to jelly beans. Jelly beans and only yellow peeps. Don't give me any. I'm colorblind now, but don't, I, I can see peep colors. That's the only colors I can see in my life is peep. No peeps besides yellow. Phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. So a couple of questions. Number one I tossed out to you, uh, do you sleep better with your pets in bed with you? Do you sleep better with your pets in bed with you? That is the question. I'd love to hear from you guys. Come on now. I'll send you a great gift, 866-870-5752. Now, over the years, I have had the opportunity and the pleasure to work with many, many, many famous, famous athletes. You know, at one point, in my life, I was training all the dogs for the New York Mets. I was working with all the Islanders, Clark Gillies, and, and the New York Jets, Marty Lyons, and, and, and got so many teams, and I can't even remember all their names. So I was working with all these athletes, and they all had one thing in common, that they had difficulty sleeping when they were on the road. Just like we talk about pets being you know consistent or need continuity in their lives. So here's a, a kind of an interesting interesting study that's kind of out, which kind of, I could have told them years ago, but now it just came out in a study. It appears that a lot of athletes, a lot of professional athletes that sleep with their dogs at home to take their dog with them on the road, because when you're keeping your sleeping conditions the same, wherever you go, it helps to trigger those more restful, deeper sleep patterns. So it appears that some athletes actually travel not necessarily with their wives or their girlfriends, but they travel with their dog or their cat because they're so used to sleeping with their pet at home and getting into that comfort zone that if the dog or cat is not with them and they got a big game coming up, it can take a, a toll on their performance. So I definitely, definitely understand that sleeping with my dogs, I can get to a much deeper sleep. Am I insane? Are these athletes insane? Or are there people out there that feel that if their dog or cat is not in bed with them, they're not getting the same kind of sleep? Come on, guys. Help me out here. Make me feel normal for a change. 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. That is the way uh, to get through to the pet show. Plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. So, you know, one of the topics I'm going to try to get to today is why dogs bark. And, uh, you know, a lot of times, just because we're not realizing why our dogs are barking and we say, knock it off, be quiet, whatever you do, uh, that just because we don't know what they're barking or we assume they're barking for no reason doesn't mean they're barking for no reason. I'll explain coming up a little bit later on today's show. Now, I told you last week I moved into a new location, right? Uh, my little Molly, the culprit, went outside, barked twice, woof, woof, and I heard the next door neighbor yell at Molly, shut up. Well, <laughs> you don't do that. You don't do that to Warren's dogs. You don't say, shut up to Warren's dogs, because you're in big trouble if you do. So anyway, kind, gentle, easy Warren who moves ants off the sidewalk so they don't get stepped on, who takes bees, or, or you've seen my, my spider bites when I move a spider from one location to another. I get along with everybody. Well, I lost it. I told you I posted this on Instagram, and if you're not following me on Instagram or YouTube, you should be. How I reacted to this guy, I simply said, did you, did you say shut up to my dog? And then I said some things that I don't want to repeat here on the radio, because I'd love to talk to you again next week on the radio, but it's kind of interesting. It's always the people with the biggest mouth that are the biggest cowards. Since I confronted him and said, listen, you don't say that to my dogs. You don't tell my dogs to shut up. And first of all, honestly, Molly went woof, woof. Nothing beyond that. I would tell you if you did, nothing beyond that. In the meantime, dogs in the neighborhood are barking like crazy. It's going nuts here. Nothing said. I just think the guy doesn't like the concept of someone move new moving into what he thinks is, is, is his neighborhood. 
Who's quieter than Warren and Denise? Who is quieter than Warren and Denise? Come on, I go to sleep at 8 o'clock at night. Yeah, I get up early, but I go to sleep at 8 o'clock at night. Un, un, unbelievable. But anyway, if uh, you, anyone have a neighbor out there that doesn't like their dog? Or their dogs. Anyone have a neighbor out there that's kind of a, a real pain in the, uh, I almost said a bad word, pain in the butt. Yelling at your dogs, doesn't like your dogs, it gives you dirty looks when you walk your dog. I don't understand people like that. I just don't get it. Phone. I was kind of like I wanted to say to them, what if I told your grandkids to shut up? My dogs are just as important to me as any of your 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 your, your kids are, your grandkids are to you. I know that sounds crazy to people out there that are not pet people, but to me they are. To me they are. You know, I used to have a, 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 a constant battle with my, my buddy, Dennis Prager, who's on the air. And, and Dennis would say, well, if there's, if there's a, a, a human being and a dog drowning, of course you have to jump in and save the human being first. And I said, no, 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 Dennis. Let me ask you a question. If, if Charles Manson and Lassie were in that pond, Lassie's coming out first. It's just the way it is. And so a lot of people don't understand the relationship that we establish and have with our dogs and cats. You know, I've been called eccentric. All the, I remember for all the, the 16 years I was the pet authority on, with Regis and Kathy Lee. Great people, by the way. I had a lot of fun on their show. By the way, I cost, the, uh, I cost ABC at least two or three couches from dogs and goats and whatever, peeing on them. It was always the dogs and goats, by the way. Never a human being, so they said. Anyway, the bottom line is I don't understand people that just can't accept the fact that there are those like me and many of you people that love animals. Don't love people any less, but we love animals too. I don't understand why they have to always make that judgment. Ah, you love dogs more than you love people. You love cats more than you love people. No, I love dogs more than I love you. Not more than I love people. Phone number here, 866-870-5752. 866-870-5752. Uh, that is the way to get through to the show. Uh, let me do this. Let me take a break. John, I want to get to you, Odanga. Uh, you got two dachshunds that need to be close to their, uh, to their guardian. We'll talk about that. A couple of open lines. I know we never have open lines here on the Pet Show. I know it's Easter Sunday, so if you have a question or a comment or want to share a great story or tell me that I'm crazy or that, that you shouldn't sleep with your pets or you should sleep with your pets, give me a call. I'd love to hear from you. Any other issues you may be having, the phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. You know, it's kind of interesting with the phones being a little slow. Obviously, I'm usually blasted. There's usually no open lines. It'll give me the opportunity to maybe get to some of the topics that I generally never get to. So let me take a quick break. Then we'll get back to uh, we'll get back to John. If you have a question or comment, great time to call me. 866-870-5752. 866-870-5752. Quick break, then right back to your calls. I'm Warren Eckstein. And we are back on the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. That phone number, 866-870-KRLA, uh, 866-870-5752. So someone asked me, uh, they just texted me about the uh, the two books behind me. Uh, if you're watching on YouTube, there's a book, two books behind me. One's called The Illustrated Dog's Life. The other one's The Illustrated Cat's Life. They were both published by an amazing English publisher, also by Random House, many years ago. I don't know if they're still in print, but if you can get a copy of either The Illustrated Dog's Life or The Illustrated Cat's life i urge you to do that uh, the photos are absolutely amazing and what i did is i commented specifically on the behaviors with every photo so they're really interesting books they're beautiful coffee table type books i don't even know if they're available but check out the illustrated dog's life for the illustrated cat's life why am i promoting this i don't get paid anymore but anyway they're great books by the way phone number here 866-870-KRLA let me get to John. Then we got Reseda and Sue. We got uh, Carmela in Costa Mesa. A lot of people calling me up about sleeping with their pets. Thank you. But be patient. Hang on. I promise I'll send you a super gift. But right now, hey, John and Tahunga, welcome to the show. Yes, good morning, Warren. I hope you can hear me all right. The phone only works on the speaker on this one. So. Well, it's okay. I can, I can hear you just fine, John. What's up? Great. Uh, you know, when you mentioned that about the athletes that uh, actually take dogs on the road uh, to keep them you know, more fit condition, actually to yeah. play their game. That makes a lot of sense to me. I, I, I heard something a long time ago where some pets were really good for people to have if they're having heart conditions and such. And so it just rang true to hear you mention that. So I have a pair of uh, <coughs> combination dachshund mini pinchers. They're rescue dogs. And they, they, they sleep with my wife and I uh, just like a little warm, hot 
hot water bottles <laughs> if they used to have those old fashioned things. They're always around us up by our heads and stuff and and, uh, well, so let me, no, no. Let me ask you a question. These are long dogs, right? They're long dogs. So, did they sleep horizontally or vertically? They sleep in between us. They they they, they find little. Well, you know, the dachshunds are boring dogs. They they like to be under the ground. So oh, yeah, yeah. They they, they, they were badger. They were used to hunt badgers. Of course, they they would always go to ground hunting badgers. Sure. Yeah, it's it's, it's just built in. It's built into their DNA, I guess. And so, um, our first dachshund we had. She was really always, always the one that made us aware that that was really true. It's true. And these two, this, this is the litter mates, a uh, boy and a girl that we picked up, uh, you know, from, from a rescue. And uh, they've been terrific uh, uh, for the last nine years of, 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 uh, of sharing our time with them. Uh, there's so many things you brought up this morning, too, that I wanted to know about. Grand, uh, Kibble. I didn't hear, I've never heard anybody say the kibble of any kind was any good for any dogs. What, but that's what? because they're trying, that's because they make more money trying not to sell you kibble, number one. And number two is, listen, I've had dogs since I was three years old. And every dog I ever had was brought up on kibble, depending on the, the, the generations or whatever, what kibble was. The, and all my dogs lived long, healthy, happy lives. So all of a sudden, here's the problem. All of a sudden, you go into a pet store, and every person at the pet store is a nutritionist. Everyone tells you what your dog should have, what your dog shouldn't have. Besides being nutritionist, almost everyone's a trainer or behaviorist, some giving out cool advice, some not so cool advice. The bottom line is this. Kibble is absolutely fine. Now, I should post that letter that Joey Herrick, the CEO of Lucy Pet Food, sent to that listener that went into a store where they were told that kibble was no good. His response oh, yeah, like to, to his response like to, to that it. letter, three pages, three pages telling you how it started, about the kibble, the name of the doctors from the University of Chicago, the top veterinary nutritionist in the country, how all of that was put together. So very often when you hear stories like that, especially when it comes to animals, especially lately, since there's been so many different TV shows and pet shows on the air, that everyone is an expert. And I got to tell you, I spend half of my day uh, uh, talking to people saying, no, no, that's not right. If the dog's barking, don't tell him to shut up. Don't don't do this. Don't put that on him. I'm gonna. And so the bottom line is, what you really need to do is understand. Find someone you really have confidence in. Talk to them, and make sure you take that advice, and then research it even a little bit more. Because if you go online, people go raw food this, raw food that, raw food this, raw food that, and there are just as many veterinarians out there saying, don't ever feed your dog raw food because I see this, I see that. So the bottom line is. From my perspective, you're asking me, I feed my dogs a combination, but kibble is a good part of their diet. So I think that's really great advice. It sounds like it could be. Um, I had one more thing to say. Sure, go ahead. Barking. These yeah. two little dogs, when people come over, they're barking and barking, barking, and we're pretty excited. But it's because they have to get down. People have to get down to their level because they're saying, hey, 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 say, pay attention to us. We're down here. You know, uh, and yeah. somebody like, kneels down, kneels down next to the dog. They stop barking and they just calm down. <laughs> it's pretty. It's pretty cute. You know, well, let me dogs, ask you a question, John. Can you imagine if you lived in a society, if you lived in a world where everyone around you was twenty-seven feet tall? How would you feel? You say, hey, listen, maybe let me get on a ladder or you bend down. I want to talk to you. Anyway, John, I got to move on. Great call. Give those two doxies a hug and a kiss. Here's what I'm going to do. Warren, I'm going to put you on Warren, hold. May, may I have as my gift uh, uh, a copy of the letter? Oh, I'll send you that anyway. What I want you to do is when you speak to when I put you on hold, speak to the um, the person screening. Tell them that I will send you a copy of that to make sure they let me know that. But I'm also going to put you on hold and send you some Lucy Pet Food as well. And I appreciate that phone call. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA. Uh, let me take a quick break. I want to get to Sue. I want to get to Karen. I want to get to Carmela. Everyone's sleeping with their dogs. This is the Pet Show, if you just turned on. We'll get to all your questions, all your comments. A quick break, then right back at you. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is the Pet Show. And number 866-870-KRLA. Um, we're going to break for the top of the hour, but after that, Karen, Carmela, you'll be up next. Let me see if I can squeeze Sue in right here. Hey, Sue, welcome to the show. Hi, Warren. Uh, hey. I just want to say that I do sleep with my cat, big yellow rescue cat that I have. I've ha had him a long time. He was five are you call? Are you in a helicopter? I, it sounds like you're in a helicopter. 
Hello? Yeah, I'm here. It sounds like you're in a helicopter. Uh, uh, so... Yes? Yeah, we're having a lot of trouble hearing you. So a lot of trouble. So you sleep with your cat. Let me do yeah. this. I can't hear. Call me. Call me back. In the meantime, call me back, Sue, because we can't. We can. Um, we can't hear you. You sound. Th th there's a me or she sounds like she's in a helicopter. So Sue, so call back. You'll be my first call. I promise. Karen, we're gonna get to you. Carmela, we're gonna get to you. Don't go anywhere. You got nothing else to do. You're listening to the pet show. What's more fun than this? By the way, coming up, I'm gonna give you the ultimate on why dogs bark. I'm all going to tell you why your cat may be going crazy all of a sudden, why your dog is constantly licking, and why your unpredictability is making your dog a little crazy. Plus, the question of the day is, do you sleep better with your dogs and your cats? I want to know. Plenty of time for your calls. we got a whole other hour to go. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Quick break for the top of the hour, then back to all your calls. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is The Pet Show. Warren Eckstein, the man for your pets. We try to stump them, but we haven't yet. Dog is barking, your cat missed the box. Your ferret's chewed up all your favorite socks. You should know how to get inside your pet. Welcome back to the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. This is it, folks. America's first and only real pet psychology, pet training, pet behavior, pet lifestyle show. So if you have a question or comment, great time to give me a call. The phone number 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. So you never know what happens on the pet show. Uh, the question of the day was, do you sleep better with your pets in bed with you? And I got a response. I got uh, Sue up there who sleeps with a cat. We have uh, Carmela we're going to get to with uh, with her four cats. We have Karen calling Ventura. It's got a potty training question. We're going to get to you as well. But I see from my computer screen, if you were listening the last hour, I had a call with someone telling me that nothing is good about, about kibble. And I told you that last week I had gotten a, uh, an email from one of my listeners uh, telling me that he went into a pet store and they told him that kibble was no good. And um, I forwarded that response to Joey Herrick, the CEO. And I just noticed on my screen right now that Frank, the guy who wrote me the letter, is with me. So let me go right to him. Hey, Frank, you there? Hey, Frank. Yeah. Oh, Frank. Well, yeah, hi, Frank. How you doing? Some... Yeah, go ahead. Correct me. Ed, she said that they were, it was suspect because some of her customers' uh, dogs were getting sick, and they had them on kibble and they, that they always use, and then they took them off and they got better. She was concerned that they were, it was contaminated because it's made by animal parts and the, and all kibbles made by animal parts, I guess, and they were concerned that maybe something was tainted and causing a problem, but they had no definite uh, proof. So it was just suspect. So she wanted me to uh, try the, you know, the food that I get and uh, and see if uh, I had a problem or not. She never said kibble. All kibble was bad. Well, in the respect that it was might be tainted. That was it. So, in other words, kibble can be tainted, but raw food can't get salmonella, or that can't be tainted. Well, it could be, but this was this was based on customers talking about that fed their dogs only kibble. So, I assume that that's uh, what they were concentrating on. Well, I I, I saw your letter, and, and tell me about Joey's response to you. Yeah, that was amazing. That was uh, really something else. I sent that out to all of my pet owners uh, that I sent the original letter to uh and uh and they came back and said wow that's amazing uh the information he gave uh on lucy pet food and how they're so uh fastidious on on how they treat the food and and the big thing too is they treat it uh, they check it before they send it out which most companies don't do that 
because it well, that you, yeah, they have their own laboratories. That's what the bottom line is. So I think the right, bottom line right. is that I, hear, I think here is the bottom line. Okay, uh, if, if 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 the lady at the at the pet food store, if she was explaining to you that maybe she was selling a specific brand of kibble, and some of the clients were getting sick on that specific brand of kibble, uh, that I so can she understand. Made a point of it. It wasn't specific. It could be any of it. Uh, well, that was know, my that was my point, Frank. She's telling you that kibble. She's telling you well, that kibble's no be good. Cheated, not because kibble's bad for dogs. It was well, no, she's telling she's no. Saying if, it, it sounded kib- like you're making it where she said it was no, bad no. for kibble was if bad she, for dogs. If, if the woman said to, to him, it, it's, it's Frank, hear me out. Frank, hear me out. If the woman said to you that kibble can be tainted and therefore you shouldn't feed it to your dogs, how is that different than saying his kibble is no good? No, this, he just said be careful because they they were suspecting there might be a problem. So she just with all kibble. No, no, Frank. With all kibble, Frank, 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 Frank. Frank, listen. With all kibble, Frank. You got to listen to me, okay? Hear me out. I want to get this across to the listeners out here. She told you that kibble could be tainted across the board. Isn't that saying that it could be tainted across the board, and maybe you shouldn't be giving your dog kibble because it could be tainted? Isn't that what she said? That's no, what I gather. She said, give it a try and see if your dog's okay or not. If the dog gets sick on the kibble, then let her know and take him off the kibble and go with something else, you know. Uh, Joe, I'm not... Just I, for I, now, I, because, you know, they're concerned that there might be a problem with kibble. And everywhere. so she put you... What kind, what kind of food... What kind of food... What kind of food did she recommend that you do, that you use? I, uh, I think uh, they had freeze-dried and other things like that maybe the raw i'm not sure okay so do you know do you know no so the lady the lady that told you the lady that listen to what i'm saying frank the lady that told you that kibble could be tainted and may not be okay and watch your dog if you're giving kibble is the same person that is recommending freeze-dried or perhaps raw food which can potentially have salmonella and bones in it so here's what i was saying and i want you to hear me very carefully okay you can listen and you can take her advice and that's fine maybe she was on target maybe a couple of her customers got their dogs got sick on some type of kibble that i don't know what brand it was but to say that all kibble could be tainted and to give your dog it anyway but if the dog gets sick i don't think that's a great response from someone who's selling pet food i appreciate the fact that you contacted me you realize what i did as soon as i got your letter i forwarded it directly to the ceo of lucy pet food to tell you specifically about why why certain foods are better than others and how careful certain companies are so the bottom line is this you can go into the pet store you could take their advice there are some people that are very very knowledgeable that understand dog and cat food really really well but if someone says to you it might be tainted let me know if your dog is sick that's not a place i'm going to be buying my food out that's just my opinion frank anyway frank i got to move on but keep listening i appreciate the fact that you called i don't necessarily agree with you because if someone said to me listen uh, don't buy this below Bologna, Warren. I wouldn't buy bologna anyway. Don't buy this bologna because it might be tainted. That's not a recommendation. I'm going to take that seriously. The word might be tainted scares me. If it might be, don't use it. That's the bottom line. Hey, keep listening. I appreciate that phone call. That's exactly the point I was making before, that there are some amazing people out there. And Frank's a pretty incredible guy. He wrote me and, and as, as, as a uh, professional, but also more importantly, when someone writes me an email that that important, where I believe that the information is not that accurate, I'm going to take an act on it. And what I did is the same exact day, Frank sent me a letter telling me what the woman had suggested to him, that kibble could be tainted if the dog gets sick, the letter or no, not my approach. I immediately contact, that's the difference, contact your CEO of the food you're feeding it. I contacted the CEO of Lucy Pet Food, Joey Herrick, who within hours wrote back to Frank and explained to him why Lucy Pet Food is made the way it is. So the bottom line is any pet food could be tainted. Uh, Any dry food could be tainted. Any wet food could be tainted. But when you have a company like Lucy that is so conscientious and spent over a million dollars in her own laboratory, that's a whole different ballgame. But to put a blanket statement that's saying that kibble might be tainted... How can you do that? How do you say that it could be tainted? How many millions and millions and millions and millions of tons of kibble are sold? Yeah, some is really bad. Some kibbles I would never give my dog. 
But I do give my dog Lucy pet food. Why? I know where that kibble is made. I know how that kibble is made. I know it's tested on a regular basis. And that makes all the difference. Because you couldn't tell me. I guarantee you, Frank, that that woman that told you or whatever type of food could not tell you the name of the CEO or you could not get a response from that CEO as quick as you got a response from Joey Herrick at Lucy Pet Food. Anyway, feed what you need to feed. I appreciate it. I hope your dog doesn't get sick, but I don't use my dog as a test at all. Agree or di- I love to hear from other people if they agree or disagree with me. The phone number, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me take you guys in order. First, it's Carmela. Then we're going to go to Karen. Then Sue. Hey, Carmela, welcome to the show. Hi, good morning. Hi, Warren. How are you, how are you today? Excellent. Thank you so much. I'm so happy and and um, um, privileged to speak with you. You asked whether... Um, uh, people sleep with their cats, and I have four, and three of them, when I go to bed, um, either one is already there, and the other two will jump up. They each have their spot on the bed. One is on the pillow next to me. The other one is at the foot of the bed, and she sleeps kind of uh, uh, across because she knows that I can kick her at night. So she's smart. She sleeps where she can't be. <laughs> and the other one is real close to me, too. So three of them will sleep with me. Uh, yeah, and I, I, I bet you sleep better because of that. And exactly. I was just going to say it's very reassuring because at night I'll reach over. Uh, if I happen to wake up, I'll just reach over and I can feel one of the cats. Uh, the boy cat, he's sleeping right there, and I just touch him, and then I move my hand because I don't want to disturb him. And, yes, it is very assuring and reassuring to have the animals on the bed with me at night. So, Carmela, let me ask you a question. Have you noticed any change in your cat's behavior? Here's why. You know, is your cat acting crazy all of a sudden, not sure what the heck is going on? Don't worry. It's just spring fever. Spring fever is a term used to describe a variety of symptoms and behavior changes associated with the change of the season from winter to spring. For us humans, it can be hard to adjust to the changing balance of light and the warmer weather. And for cats, it's so much more extreme because they have a stronger sense of smell and also a stronger vision as well. And their senses are so much stronger than ours, so the changes can really overload them with the natural world. For example, the light of mornings comes more meows earlier in the morning. Humans can easily re-roll over, put a pillow over the head, but cats can't. So if you have a cat that's waking you up all of a sudden, I suggest this. Uh, get those darkness shades, those shades that make things a little bit darker or whatever. But it's not unusual for dogs and cats to change a little bit of their behavior, uh, and it is kind of like spring fever. Everything changes. The hours change. Uh, some t- daylight saves savings time gets in there, we're up earlier, we're up later, their clocks are set off. So spring fever does actually affect our dogs and our cats. 866-870-KRLA, the phone number. Great call, by the way. I don't go in there. I'm going to put you on hold. You are getting some kitty lickies for your cats. That will make them even sleep better. 866-870-5752. That is the way to get through. It's a great call by my friend Frank. Uh, Frank's a regular listener to the show, and, and, and I hope he didn't think what I was saying we misunderstood me. But the bottom line is that when someone says, uh, if you give this to your dog, be careful, it may be tainted, uh, the first thing I would say, well, then I'm not giving that to my dog. You know, that, so that was a, to me, that was a, a blanket statement. If, 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 if someone said to me, listen, kibble or dry food can be tainted, to me, to me, that would mean that it can be tainted. And so now I just didn't understand that, I guess. 866-870-KRLA. Let me do this. Let me take a break. When we come back, Karen, Sue, Marsha, you'll be right there with me. A quick break, then right back at you. And by the way, speaking about Lucy Pet Food, you know, I've worked with many, many pet food companies over the years, and I've known some of the people in charge of these pet food companies. But quite honestly, if you go to the supermarket, if you go online, or even if you go to some of the pet stores, you're going to see literally dozens and dozens, if not 50, 60, 70 different brands. And neuter so there's no stray cats out there shredding their stuff. Uh, Karen and Sue, we're going to get you in just a second. I want to jump over to Marsha for a second in uh, La Cañada. Hey, Marsha, how you doing? Oh, thank you. Thank you so much, um... Um, I, I want to thank you for how you advocate for um, animals, 
And so the point uh, that I'd like to make is related to like a, a perfection versus a just good. If you keep, if you want perfection, uh, what will happen is a lot of the people that have little animals um, that they don't have a lot of money. Right, and they think they need to buy the greatest food, and they can't go to whatever. Instead, then they will. They are turning them in to the um, humane societies, and they are getting, you know, euthanized. Look, so it's better if they don't have the perfect life, but they have a good life. If they, the, the people feel they can't buy the less expensive whatever. And they do that for their own children, uh, whatever. Uh, so it's good that they even take them in and keep them as instead of them getting euthanized, you know. That's, no, that's, no, you're, 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 Marshall, so you're I absolutely right. You know what? Of- Liv- living, here in, living here in Southern California, the bottom line is there are so many organizations that can help out with low-cost food, low-cost spaying, free vaccinations. Lucy just did a free vaccination clinic uh, not that long ago. So there are options out there for people that have difficulties in terms of uh, finances, and that's, that's absolutely fabulous. But you're absolutely right. Uh, some people may not be able to afford uh, the, the, the top-line food, so therefore what they can do is, is sometimes between the food banks that are out there and the other, uh, the other organizations, rescue in your main they can uh, they can help them out what kind of pets do you have by the way just like running through my where i live you know and but look they're all little beautiful lives and they're oh, they, they, oh, they, they are and, listen there's um, not a dog there's not listen. is perfect in this yep. it's, it's earth not heaven, you're right right so you're absolutely you right can't Marcia. do the ultimate if you're if you're dissuading people from adopting or keeping animals Unless, uh, you know, you are, uh, you have uh, the money, uh, you have the, you're the one. Yeah, Marsha, 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 I got, I got to move on. Uh, uh, we're going to put you on hold and I'm going to send you some Lucy Petru. But the bottom line is that, you know, there, there are so many groups out there, so many great rescues I've worked with over the years. Rescue Me Inc. I serve on their board and so many other groups out there. Wagmore, others out there doing great work, uh, finding as many homes for animals as they possibly can. But there are things that people can do uh, if for, for financial less, you know, spaying and neutering, uh, lots of things. Uh, lots of things that they uh, they're able to do. All right, let me do this. Let me go to let me go to Karen. Hey, Karen, welcome to the show. Hi, Warren. Thank you so much for taking my call. It's my pleasure. What's up, Karen? Okay, I have uh, rescued from six weeks old a year and a half old dog. And they say he's Bichon Terrier mix, 25 pounds, adorable. He's perfect in every way, except I can't get him to stop going potty um, on the floor. And he just, he starts and stops. He'll be fine. He's got access to a doggy door. And he goes out half the time and then halfway uh, in between, sometimes he stops and potties on the floor. How do okay, I when you stop say, it? I when you know. say, when you say, I love the term. I love the term potties. He potties on the floor, peeing or pooping. Give me an idea. I'm peeing or pooping. Sorry, give you what? Is he peeing or is he pooping on the floor, Karen? Oh no, no. I'm sorry. Okay, it's pee. He pees on the floor. Okay, here's what I want you to do. Very, 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 very simple. I'm assuming he goes out often enough where he doesn't have to pee. It's just a little habit that he's developing. If you take him out often enough, you know, four times, three times a day, and he's peeing outside and he's healthy, here's all you need to do. The next time he pees in the house, what I'd like you to do is thoroughly clean it up with a good stain and odor remover that has enzymes made specifically for pet urine. 
get that there. Then what I'd like you to do, very simply, start spending more time with the dog, specifically in that area where he's had accidents before. You can put down some of his, his treats in that area as well. It's very rare that a dog's going to want to urinate uh, where their food is, where their treats are, or where their guardians spend a lot of time with them. If the dog is totally healthy and you get him out a lot, a lot of people say, well, you know, my dog pees. And I say, well, how often do you take him out? I take him out twice a day and he, he runs to the door, but he's peeing. Well, he's got to go. He can't hold it anymore. So the bottom line is, if you're telling me he's getting walked on a regular basis and there's no need, he gets water and there's no need for him to, to pee here, then follow my advice. And usually what will happen is two or three times of doing that, the idea will get across and the problem will be over. Now, in certain cases, I may have to go a little bit further, but that should be your starting point right now. Okay, I'm doing everything you just said except for the food. I use the enzyme, and he does it in different rooms of the house. Um, it, it's like when he's walking by, he just stops, lifts his leg. Okay, well that's a different. No, that's a different. That's a different. Out. That's a. That's a different story. Now, I know it's going back. I'm hearing back and forth. That's okay. a. That's a different story. I assume from what you just told me that he pees on his way out. So I assumed it was in one specific area. Now that you're telling me he goes in many different areas of the house, it's a whole different ball game. What I want you to do is the next time he pees anywhere in the house, I don't care where it is, I don't care if you find it the next day, take him to another area in the same room. So if he pees on the left side of the room, take him to the right side of the room. Have his harness and leash on him and tie him up. Obviously, enough room to stand up and lie down. Then I want you just to take a paper towel, dab up just a drop or two of his urine, put it in front of him, just out of his reach, <clears throat> excuse me, and leave it there for 20 minutes, coming back every 10 minutes and just say no. At the end of 20 minutes, don't say a word, no grudges held, untie him and forget about it. What we're going to start finding out is that dogs do not like to pee where they hang out. So if he starts to realize where he's peeing, no matter where he goes or when he goes, he's going to have to stay with his own urine. That should stop him. If that doesn't work, you'll get back to me. So let's try that first. I'm glad you told me now he's peeing in different spots because initially you said, it was on his way out, and I just assumed it was one area on his way out to the door. So yeah. I think that's going to make a big difference for you. Okay. Thank you. I will don't try go. that. I will definitely do that. It, 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 Thank I'm telling you, you so it, much. Don't go anywhere, Karen. I'm going to put you on hold, and we're going to send you a copy of How to Get Your Dog to Do What You Want on its way to you. I uh, so we're going to get to you, I promise. i got to get to you. The phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Uh, that, is, uh, that is to way uh, to get through to the pet show. It's still bugging me. That call I had with Frank is still kind of sitting with me wrong. You know, there are so many people out there that work in the pet industry that are absolutely amazing. But it's a $100 billion industry now. So a lot of people come and go, and a lot of people are getting into the industry. So I just want you to make sure, whoever you take advice from, whether it be your veterinarian, your behaviorist, your trainer, your next-door neighbor, or me, whoever you're listening to for pet advice, you really kind of make sure that it makes sense to you, make sure that it sounds right to you, because if it doesn't sound right, chances are it's not right. Um, I wish that everyone had the access that I have every day to literally hundreds of, of, of articles coming from all around the world and the major universities talking about this in nutrition or that in behavior or this in nutrition to understand it. But just make sure wherever you're getting your advice from that you're getting advice that you actually can trust. And don't be afraid to question advice. Just like I tell, if you're going to a vet and there's a problem, don't be afraid to ask for a second opinion. Always check. And that's why I'm glad Frank wrote to me. I was able to have Joey uh, respond to him. And, 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 and again, if the woman said to him that, you know, just try it, a lot of it's been tainted, I haven't heard that. 
I haven't heard that. I haven't heard that a lot of uh, uh, kibble has been tainted. Maybe in her store, maybe it's a specific brand or a specific product that she has, but I speak to thousands of people every week. You know, after this, I do my, my international show, and I haven't heard recently, recently, of any major uh, contamination in dry food. So that's why I react the way I do. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Let me take a break. Uh, Sue, Karen, you'll be up next. Great time to call me. Do an open line or two. I still got lots of great stuff to give away, including Lucy Pet Food, copies of my books. I got some great T-shirts. I just saw someone the other day wearing one of those T-shirts in Arizona. Uh, none of my friends woke up. I wear one of those T-shirts and see the response you get. Uh, pl- and I also got some of those air So plenty of time for your calls. Lots of great stuff to give away. 866-870-5752. 866-870-KRLA. Speaking about people that help animals. I want you to listen to me carefully. You love animals. Obviously, you do. You're listening to the pet show, right? So I'm assuming that you love animals. We are back on the pet show all morning. Next, and just before I get to your call, Sue, you're going to be up next. I want you to listen to me carefully because this is the first time we've ever been able to do this. And the bottom line is that I don't know. I think this could be the last week, so I want you to listen to me carefully because this is this is the first and only time my website, thepetshow.com, is throwing a BOGO. That's buy one, get one. That's right. Buy one Nature Vet wellness product. Get the second one absolutely free. These are top quality pet supplements and wellness products at insanely affordable prices. Just select two Nature Vet products on my website, thepetshow.com. Don't forget that T-H-E. It's all one word, thepetshow.com. And enter the code BOGO, B-O-G-O, at checkout to get your free item. Whether it's joint support, allergy care or calming aids nature vet has the product you need and at my website thepetro.com makes them affordable don't forget to enter the coupon code bogo b-o-g-o at checkout only good while supplies last and let me tell you they're getting thin so go today to thepetro.com thepetro.com buy one nature vet product get the second one absolutely free all right let me get back to the phone lines here let's go to sue and Reseda. Hey, Sue and Reseda, how you doing? Hi, Sue. Um, I, wanted, I wanted to tell you that I do sleep with my uh, he's 16-year-old yellow kitty. And I, I got him, I think he was five years old because he was a feral cat. And I took him to the vet and they said he was five years old at the time. But he uh, he's very uh, good about sleeping with me. He has this blanket on the end of the bed and he sleeps there. And his purring is just uh, wonderful because it helps to soothe me and put me to sleep. And then he's very uh, careful about not waking me up during the night or any time. I mean, in the morning, he'll get up when I get up, and he knows when I'm ready to get up. So um, he's been, he's a wonderful cat, and I'd, I'd miss his purring if he wasn't around. So, so, and, so this, uh, you, saved, you saved this cat's life. You adopted him at five years old, and he's paid you back every day since then, hasn't he? Yeah, I, I I got him fixed. He was he was a kitty that used to come yeah. around and 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 visit my my Bengal cat. I had a Bengal cat at the time that he was interested in, <laughs> and I got him fixed. and And he's been a wonderful pet. And he does eat um, uh, the uh, um, all kinds of food. You know, uh, kibble especially. He likes uh, the. Um, uh, Food that is uh, it's good for his teeth. I know it's it's excellent for his teeth and absolutely. And there's a lot, there's any a lot of problem. Uh, there's a lot of pros. That. A lot of pros. There's a lot of pros and a lot of cons. You know, you got to really research for yourself. I want you to keep sleep. And you're like you know like me when I have no cats at the moment. But when I had my cats, when they would purr in bed, well, you know what I do now. God, I'm gonna get in trouble. This is gonna sound crazy. When my little Molly, my little rescue Molly, not so much Willie. Willie goes to sleep under the covers. Molly will go under the covers right next to me, right by the pillow. And will actually, I will actually try to sync my breathing with Molly. 
and we kind of breathe together. It sounds a little crazy, I know, but it makes me fall asleep. It really does. Anyway, Sue, don't go in there. I'm going to put you on hold. I'm sending you some kitty lickies for your cat and give him a hug. And I do that. As Molly breathes, I breathe. We breathe together. It's kind of like it's kind of like meditation with Molly. Well, that's going to be my next book, Meditation with Molly. Uh, all right, let me do this. Um, got some great calls coming in. I want to get to all your calls, but I want to, I, I want to get to this topic because I didn't get to it last week. I want to talk about barking dogs. And just listen to me carefully. It's not going to take me long. I wrote this this week, and I'm going to read it to you and share it with you. Just because we aren't aware of what the dog is barking at, it doesn't mean they haven't seen, heard, or smelled something that they're not sure about. Don't underestimate the sense of hearing and sense of smell. Is your dog barking for attention? A dog will quickly learn what gets attention. Gadgets to prevent barking are really unfair on dogs when he's doing what comes naturally for what he believes is a good reason. To be punished by something which inflicts pain or discomfort is very confusing. Gadgets such as collars which spray, emit ultrasound, or deliver an electric shock only serve to give a quick fix and the misguided belief that the problem is solved. Far better to invest time and effort in getting to the root cause of the problem and fixing it permanently in a kind way. My summary, when your dog barks, you need to quickly assess whether it's because there's a genuinely perceived threat somewhere or just to get your attention for fun, where he's looking towards a sight, sound, or smell, or direct at you. The attention seeking, we shouldn't be trying to stop our dogs barking completely, but should be able to control it when it gets excessive. I told you what I do when my dogs are barking. I go over to them and I say, uh, Willie, Molly, thank you for letting me know about the bad guys. I'll take it from here. So all of those electronic collars, those nonsense, dogs bark for a reason. Sometimes we can't see or feel the reason, but the reason is real to your dog. All right, let's go to Ty Smith in Big Bear. Hi, Ty. Welcome to the show. Is it Ty? Did I get that right, Ty? Yes, sir. It's Ty. Hi. How you doing, Ty? How are you? Uh, I've been doing all right. Could be doing a little better. What's up? Uh, but, but here's the problem with the dog. So I have three Cocker Spaniels, okay? And I got three separate food bowls for them, and I always spread it out. Always spread out the food bowls. Yet, the, I don't know if he's like the alpha of the pack. I don't know what he is, man. But he just seems to like, he just tries to not attack my other dogs when they're eating, but he doesn't want them eating when he's eating. Let me ask you a question again. Any bloodshed? No bloodshed. All love. He, here's what I want you to do, okay? I want you to start feeding the dogs out of maybe four, make, you know, like give each, this isn't for life now, okay? Give each dog two bowls, or at least give the dog that's being a little more assertive, at least feed him out of two bowls. So feed him his food out of two bowls, not more food. Spread his two bowls apart just a little bit so he realizes it's his food right alongside. Again, it could go back to his early uh, early puppyhood. I don't know how many puppies were in a litter or what happened, but what I want want you to do right now is make sure he realizes when his bowl is empty he doesn't have to be aggressive or assertive to the other dogs because you know what there's another bowl with the rest of his food right alongside of him be consistent with that i deal with this all the time and that should get over the food aggressiveness yeah it's just he's getting aggressive and another thing i noticed that he does a lot he likes to eat rocks i yeah, well, that, you why, know that I tell, I tell him i'm almost like hey man I'll just be straightforward with them. I'm like, you can't be doing that. You're going to be busy. Well, well, I mean, no, no. When, when, how old is the dog? How old is the dog? Uh, he's about five. So he should right, be sometimes when you, what I'm thinking. Sometimes when you have a dog that's chewing rocks, it could be a number of things. It could be that their tooth or gums bother them, and chewing on the rocks helps alleviate the pain. That could be part of it. It could be something missing from their diet or nutrition. That could be part of it as well. So it's more than that. It could be that there's a problem with the gum, a problem with the teeth, could be any, or something nutritionally that he's missing. So what I would do is if he's picking up rocks in the backyard, where I'm assuming they are, they're not in your living room, what I'd like you to do is when you let him out in the yard, 
backyard. Before you let him out, go hide a bunch of toys and other things in the backyard. Get his focus off the rocks on that. But I do want you to check his teeth carefully. Make sure there's no teeth or gum problems, and that's why he's chewing the rocks. And I'm going to also do this. I'm also going to put you on hold, and I am going to send you. I'm going to know what I'm going to send you. What do I want to send you? I'm going to send you some. You know what? I'm going to send you. You have four dogs, three dogs. What do I want to send you? I'm going to send you some Lucy Pet Food. On its way to you, Lucy Pet Food, follow my advice, Ty. It's going to make a big difference for you. You know, feeding dogs is, is kind of interesting, but a lot of times people don't take into consideration what I do. But again, this is my profession, okay? So very often, in order to resolve an issue, and, and, and I think, I remember having this conversation with David Letterman. I'm not just dropping names here. And Dave said, Warren, what separates you from the rest of the group? And very often, what separates me from the rest of the group is pretty simple. I never try to resolve a problem before I try to take the time to figure out why it is a problem or what caused the problem. In many cases, behavioral issues that guardians think they have are not really issues at all. The dog barks when someone walks by. What do I do? Well, that's what dogs do. They bark when someone walks by. You don't have a problem. So understanding this, and this is really important, if you have a dog with an issue, and you're working on it yourself because many issues can be resolved by the individual guardian, take the time. Really be analytical. Speak to the family. Have a kind of family meeting and try to figure out when did it start, what caused the behavioral issue, and once you figure out what caused it, it can make a whole lot of difference in how easily it can be resolved. Hey, the phone number here, 866-870-KRLA, 866-870-5752. Quick break, then right back to your calls. We'll get to you, uh, Tila and Barbara, next I'm Warren Eckstein. This is the Pet Show. I'm Warren Eckstein. That phone number, 866 uh, Just if you're driving around, or everyone's out there shopping for Easter, doing what you're doing, I'll give you the number for my network show, which starts at 1 o'clock. The same type of show. I give away the same gift. So you're out there and you're not home yet. Uh, you can start calling at uh, 1 o'clock. I'll give you that number in just a second. But right now, let me go to Tila calling from uh, the great state of Alabama. Hi, Tila. Welcome to the show. Hi, Tila. How are you? Hey, good. Can you hear me okay now? Cause it Absolutely perfect. What's up? Okay, good deal. Uh, yeah, well, first of all, I don't need a, one of your wonderful gifts because you just sent me something recently, so thank you for that. Um, and then I wanted to also say that your products, the Hugs and Kisses and the Nature Vet and the Lucy Pet, when I get those, I actually buy them also so that I can distribute them to people. I just dropped off some, uh, uh, some of the uh, Nature Vet just recently, uh, this today, for someone's dog who's having trouble getting around. Once they in, use any of the products you recommend, they're on them. They're on them from there. It's just amazing. So I encourage oh, I you so to appreciate get them. Well, no, I appreciate what you're doing. I appreciate what you're yes, doing. Yes, it's wonderful. So helpful to see what happens to these pets. Okay, so here's the issue. Um, my friends who I take care of their pet real regularly because I take care of a lot of pets, leaving for 10 weeks. I could not take care of the dog for 10 weeks. The dog is massively connected to the wife of the couple. And he's very bonded to me, so he does fine with me when they're gone. But because I can't do it for the 10-week period, they're actually having somebody move in, and a young pup guy, and he's going to do most of the care, but then they're going to be piecemealing it with all kinds of people coming and going and letting him out and all, all kinds of stuff. But he is, a, he is not connected to these people that are coming and going. I'm concerned for how he's going to do during that time to the point that I'm going to probably make a three-hour drive periodically just to try to help him out. You know, to yeah, I'm a little, I'm a little, I'm a little, cons- I'm a little concerned also because the the yeah, emotional, yeah, the absolutely. emotional feeling of the, first of all, uh, the, the 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 person he loves the most is going to be gone, right? They're not going to be there. Right. It's a ten-week period of time, which is a long, long time. Long Having time. different people pop in all the time could be very, very confusing for the dog. I mean, if there's no choice, there's no choice. I don't know if he has any relationship with the people beforehand that are going to be popping in and taking care of him, but that could freak him out also. I got to be honest. Okay. With you, okay. If I hate to say this because I know what an incredible woman you are, uh, but if I were you, I'd be making that three hour drive. Well, I'm going to be going over to check on him periodically, but because I have so many people already committed yeah. to take care of their yeah, pets in different places, I can't. So, why do don't you do this? Them. Why don't you make sure that the people go when are they leaving? Uh, they leave uh, May 1 and come back mid July or so. All right, so they have a whole month ahead of time. Let the dog get to know these people over the next that, month. Yeah, yeah, that's what they're trying to do. It's not going okay, to be wonderfully well. 
It's well, not, then give yeah, it some. Give it some more. Give it some more time. Let them spend some time with the dog. Let them get to know the dog a little bit better. Just make sure. And the only thing that freaks me out a little bit is sometimes when people are taking care of someone's dog, uh, it's easy for the dog to get loose to get out. So make sure there's no escape route for the dog whatsoever. Uh, make sure they leave a radio or TV on for the dog. Make sure when they come and they sit down, let the dog kind of cozy up to them a little bit rather than forcing themselves on the dog. I wish they could spend a lot more time with the dog between now and May. I think that's going to make a difference. And thank God for someone like yourself. At least you'll be able to check in. At least I'll have your phone number if, God forbid, there is an emergency. Yeah, I'll try. But ha- yeah, the eating is a problem, too. He probably won't even hardly eat while they're gone. That's going to be well, that you know, that's really. what that's why that's why that's why it's so important if you're going to be traveling to make sure you get your dog or your cat adjusted to the changes that are going to take place when you're gone. And and so yeah. he may not eat right away, but so if you have him warm up the food a little bit, have them spoil him a little yeah. bit, whatever they got to do to get him to. I got to move on anyway. Okay. Say hello to everyone. Say hello to everyone in Alabama. I'm going to donate a gift to a rescue on your in your name, and I appreciate that. All right, take care now. I love my listeners in Alabama. They're the best. Hey, the phone number, 866-870-CAROLEY. By the way, if you can't get through, i got to do a break. But if we can't get through, remember, the National Canadian Show starts on Radio America, Armed Forces Radio, all around the world. Starts exactly at 1 o'clock. Write this number down, the same type of show. I give away the same gifts, 877 725 Eight two five five eight seven 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 two five eighty two fifty five. Don't start calling to one that goes into Radio America, based in Washington D.C. A quick break, then right back to some calls. You know, if your dogs or cats, and we are back on the pet show. <clears throat> Here's the bottom line. Barbara, I could take your call right now, but I'd have to rush you. Jason, I could take your call right now, but I'd have to rush you, and I don't want to do that. But I'm writing your names down. In four minutes, I want you to start calling this number. I'm going to give you. Eight seven 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 two five eight two five five. Eight seven 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 two five eight two five five. You will be my first two callers on that show, I promise. And as I said, it's the same type of show. I give away the same gift. So Barbara, start calling at one o'clock eight uh eight seven 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 two five eighty two fifty five. I wanted to just share this with you in the last couple of minutes that we have. You know, the times they're changing, everything's changing. Radio's changing, TV's changing, books are changing. I want you to start following me on my YouTube channel. Why? Because you never know what tomorrow is going to bring. And if you want to follow me and the advice I've been giving to you for over 43 years, you should subscribe to my YouTube channel. It's absolutely free. I do share information there every single day. I do answer pet questions there from time to time as well. You can ask the question on my website, uh, thepetshow.com, and and I'll answer a couple every single week. So just go to my YouTube channel. It's free. It's youtube.com slash Warren Eckstein and subscribe. As I said, the subscription is absolutely free. So when you go there, there's there's what I call the, the shorts. Those are one-minute tips that I share almost every day, giving you advice on chewing, jumping, barking, digging, whatever. There's also longer versions of information that I give, like why do dogs lick themselves. I'm not going to have time to do that today. That will be up there. There's also videos from years ago on uh, doing Regis and Kathy Lee, The Tonight Show, The Letterman Show. Uh, I, when I was the, uh, uh, the contributing editor for The Today Show for almost 16 years, there's a lot of videos there. there even videos on, I was on the Merv Griffin show. So it's a lot of fun, but you never know what tomorrow's going to bring. If I can't talk to you sometime, maybe if you're not a member of my YouTube channel, uh, you will disappear. So check out YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. In terms of uh, questions right now, if you're listening, write this number down because in exactly one and a half minutes, you can start calling my National Canadian Radio America show. And that phone number is is 877-725-8255, 877-725-8255. And as I said, if you want information 24-7, shoot over to the YouTube channel. I'll be expanding that a lot. YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. That's YouTube.com slash Warren Eckstein. Till next week, give all your pets a big hug and a kiss for you. One right between the ears for me. I'm Warren Eckstein. And thank you and bless you once again for listening to the Pet Show.